The best time to write is... Now. now. The best place to write is... Here. Here. The best person to write is... You. Me. Thank you very much. <laughs> I am Ezreal Johnson. This is Take the Night Off in November 2017. We have three amazing features, although one of them gave me a heart attack, so I didn't know he was going to be late. No siento, senor. Stop me in. All right, so first I want to give you a couple of announcements. Um, on your seat, there should have been two flyers. Yeah. One flyer would have been for next month's show, which is December 8th. We have three amazing features, which I will talk about throughout the night. Uh, and on the other side, there's a poetry prompt. The other flyer may be the flyer for tonight, or it might be a flyer from the previous month. But it also has a poetry prompt in the back. If you feel somewhat compelled to write a piece based on a poetry prompt, please feel free. We also have more of the old uh, flyers if you want to have a look at them. As far as other prompts, we do have these um, flappy signs here. They all have poetry prompts on them. The only one doesn't turn is this one because it falls. Um, if you need scrap paper, we have scrap paper. Um, the whole idea is this is an inspiration showcase. This isn't just poetry. This is everything. We want you to feel inspired. Without without forcing you for, without forcing you to be inspired because that was a good purpose. <laughs> Our first performer is never at a loss for. Please welcome, if he's ready, Mark Mannheimer. I didn't warn anybody. <laughs> this first a um, couple from this book if the moon would write which Ezreal published twice even twice <laughs> twice um, and the moon has risen more than twice too since then yes the okay um, this first one's called to know and to know and all you need to know about this one is that I was adopted I was an adopted child and my I'm trying to think well, my, my name is Mark. My adoptive parents called me Mark. My foster parents named me David, and my birth mother named me Gary. To know and to know. My plague name was Gary when I was small and did not know that I was small. When there was only yellow, not a ball, not round, and not yellow, only the scent of the sun, which felt like my mother when she put me down for my nap after Felix the cat. I played with that yellow ball like it was the key to something I'd spend my entire adult life learning to recall. I played with it, a psychological wormhole linking me to the other mother I screamed goodbye to at first. It's called The New Good News. Um, and uh, I don't know if it's good news or not. It's it, uh, it's good news to me, and it probably doesn't mean anything to anybody else. So if you're kind of confused by it, that's right where, right where I want you. Okay. The new good news. Time shifts. It's hard to believe. Continents drift. Is this where we're going? Are the Florida Keys really to be consumed by snow, Haiti by gold? The world moves into the end of the beginning. What we once knew for certain we can no longer accept. The new good news is hard to believe. Can death really bring us happiness? The material world, an illusion, human life, obsolete. We will live then in love alone, where everyone will be equally wealthy with absolutely nothing. And the, la the last one I'll read from this book is How to Free a Fly. Flies sense your, your point of irritation, and when your animosity toward them peaks, they work it, work it, work it. Why? Because after all, they're not happy being sugar, spit, and shit eaters. But release a fly from all expectation and from all disdain, and you allow it to look at itself and to live with itself. And now longing for some kind of inner peace, it may just leave you in peace to look at yourself. Uh, this is 
the silver mean. This is my favorite chat plug. I don't know if it's still in print. There's still copies left. There's maybe no copy. Um, this, uh, there, there was a bar slash coffee shop slash uh, art studio in Lakewood called uh, Bella Dubby. And this, uh, this is written about a, uh, a painting there. Uh, and it's fiction, except for the description of the painting is not fiction. The, the rest of it, the story around it is I just made up, so I don't know who this artist was. So it's called Strokes, so certainly. Floating landscapes of mud orange, radish red, hills falling at each other's feet like swallows, flying in clusters lost in one another. A hint of a splash of yellow sun hovering above. Strokes so certain, so true, there is trust involved here. The artist may have been close to her mother, a locus of self-assuredness. The jumble at the foreground is a blood purple march of, of spears, battle foliage. And the sky, muted purple, misty, regretful, like the heart of a girl on her way to her first day of preschool, beating the urge to run back home, one resolute step after another. This is called Where Infinity Ends. It's a long wait for infinity to end. You might as well wait for her mind to change or for your mother to stop sending you Valentine's Day cards. <laughs> Better to accept what is inflexible as fixed. The speed of light, the sad behavior of racist monkeys that have been denying nurturing, the Buddha's first truth of the inevitability of suffering, things that could be tested and measured, meeting the standards of infallible science. Yet there will always be anomalies those places where the universe bends, such that one plus one equals three, where infinity ends and shattered hearts mend, our impossible love, a hypothesis that has finally been proven correct. Um, these go faster than this other one. This means you can read more. They're so <laughs> short, yeah. For the um, awesome. Thought disorder. It's also momentous. The moment I mean, everything in it, worlds, past, present, future, imaginary and unimaginable. So overwhelming that I can't see straight through all of it, can't grasp a single phrase or thread central to my experience to share. So I dance around the point faster and faster spinning further and further backward into empty space forgotten, never scratching the itch that hungers for the intimacy of tasting just where in the hell it is I am. I do have a pocket They say, what did, what did they know? Um, this is called Quantum, school, quantum Squirrels. Wavelengths course through their bodies, making them earthy oscillations, furry surges of joy. I like to think their waves resonate through empathy with other frequencies at subatomic levels. I saw a brown squirrel with a white tail in the park today. This sighting, if not rare, was welcome on a day overcast and otherwise unhappy. And perhaps in the all-seeing all eye of a conscious unified field, lies a vibration that hums a magnificent music into every level of creation, such as when a day-saving rodent makes a cameo, when a janitor at a particle physics lab discovers a doubt that will change us all, or when an artless suitor touches a silken shoulder and a line of dominoes falls somewhere, one by one. Um, this Am I going to break this? No, you're fine. Go ahead. Really? Okay. Just leave it there. Um, there's an artist named Jim, Jim Volk. Um, he's down in Columbus now, I think, but he comes up to Cleveland. Might come up here sometimes if you ever have a chance to see him. He's incredible. He's a guitar player, and he does incredible uh, acoustic guitar. He does incredible things with a guitar that you would never imagine someone could do with an acoustic guitar, you know, Looper, where it loops his music. 
and he sings too a little bit. Um, Jim Wolf covers Van Morrison. Mighty Melodious Man. Trying to ascending spiral, simultaneous circuits, melodies gone viral throughout the transviral ether. Destroys the sound, only to scat, shatter, and reassemble it in midair. Guitar monster with long primate hands, chomps out chords from songbooks not yet born. Harmonic notes, a flurry of crystal fireflies fly across the room. Jim Volk covers Van Morrison's Into the Mystic. It is a meal for paupers, a salvation in tinkling wine glasses, communal laughter, and other amazement. And, um, that's what I'll do from The Silver Man, it's called The Silver Man. Um, um, trying to capture like small things and big things, and how there's like something in the middle, like us, that um, is very true to form or full of potential. So the, this is the silver man. A mosque, a mosquito, a mountain, a molecule, an earth, an electron, a quasar, a quark, a galaxy, gravity, an infinite greatness, an infinite smallness. Wherein lies the perfect size, the silver moon in between, a baby laying its hand in his mother's arms, a fireman pulling a child from harm, a 90-year-old man in a 30-year-old hippie van, a future U.S. president humming the soundtrack to stop making sense, the middle of the median, a healthy dose of tedium, the why that we search, the how that we learn, and the realm of love, a greater home, suspended in grace and no and unknown. Put out in August of uh, 2016, 2015. <laughs> it matters to some people, but it, uh, in my mind, 2015 and 2016 are quite the same. <laughs> um, so, um, this is called Deja Vu. He found her, this, this was uh, an actual shop called Deja Vu, and it's no longer in Lakewood, but it was. Uh, <coughs> really quite an interesting store. Um, a lot of really uh, classy furniture and clothes and odd bits and ends that you'd never think would find a home in the same little space. So all very old stuff. So. He found her by a dusty bin of old books in a vintage furniture and bric-a-brac store. Deja Vu summoned them to find something each had lost and had not been able to replace. The second book in the odd candle holder. These they found on sale, half off, red tag, waiting. It's called Con Conversation with Another Gentleman on the Ward. Every step, every single double, every other nothing, in between every line, I discern his meaning. In every heartbeat, I can hear his feeling. It is the same as mine. Outside, I would not have given him the time. Inside, let us be uncertain. It's not, um, it's not, like, not really reflective of the story of The Last Emperor, which was a movie and also a true story. Um, but um, it was about the last emperor of China who uh, became like a bad boy and got into drugs. And he, he was like a, a really sheltered child, and he only knew the people who uh, thought him to be, almost be like a, a god on earth until um, the communist uh, takeover of China and he, he was kind of cast out of the forbidden city and he had to stand up on his own two feet. It was a really interesting story. But that's not what it's about. It's just, just called The Last Emperor. Um, when I stop clinging, wanting, depending, I will be entirely lost. And no longer blue, I will no more seek validation from you. And the feeling will arise only to give and direct. I will not be a being only unto myself, but for others here where we all have toppled. 
dictators, dethroned, commanders, leaders, unknown. You have it there? And this is the last one uh, from this book that I'll do. It's called From Village. It's for Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, he's uh, a Buddhist teacher who's pretty ill well right now. I think I don't think he's going to come out of the effects of what was it, a stroke? Yeah, really a that stroke. But he, you know, he has some quality of life now. Uh, but he's, I don't think he's ever going to recover for uh, any more than he is now. So it's called Fun Village. And this is, it's more about his community of people, uh, of, of devotees, or uh, community of practitioners, um, and him. So, shining dome, mild ball by bears of woe. You crawled so many miles on so many knees just to eat injustice once a thousand, countless times. The victory is in the trying. It hasn't ceased even as old age and political cage whitewash over the Zen graffiti. You scrawled so defiant, so trusting that your efforts would relieve the suffering of those you sacrificed yourselves to be. Where are we at with time? You've been going for 17 minutes, so three more minutes. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, there's a couple more because some of that was me. Okay. No, it wasn't. No, oh, you didn't. Sorry for long. Well, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, go ahead, take more minutes. I, th I thought <laughs> meant he was tired or something. That was me. Um, uh, so I'll just read a few new ones. Uh, actually, I like the other ones better. I don't know what's happened to my skills um, lately. So. It's called Last Summer, uh, in parentheses, Ed. My second childhood nemesis, the crush of my first crush, of my first date, of my first kiss. She opened her mouth, a bit of a pleasant shot. She wrote him notes in French class. Envy is not green, it is white, pure and bright, a rage of wash me clean. His big lips, blue eyes, sandy hair, his thick accent of reasoning, his wit, goody left shoes, turned, bo turned bad boy, once I defend, befriended him, a shower of vinyl that, that last summer, Bowie, yes, talking heads, we sat on his bed talking of many things, of endings and never beginning, till the last beer, the last reefer, the last of all sacraments, love would take a new form. Um, this is uh, a day with Linda, and it's from a time in my life uh, college years, like around 20 years old, when I was uh, in, in deep self-denial. Um, I was kind of living in ascetics lifestyle, um, not eating enough, not um, spending time with people. And this is kind of, she was one of the last friends that I spent time with that so this some particular summer that I'm reading about, so a day with Linda. We took our shoes off, walked the Euclid Creek, throwing rocks into the water, careful not to get too wet. Afterwards, I drove her to a new used bookshop in an old nobly building. She browsed novels while I looked through perennial philosophy. When we got back to her house, I gave her back her copy of Summer, Somerset Maugham's The Razor's Edge. I had read the epigraph, the sharp edge of a razor is difficult to pass over. Thus the wise say the path of salvation is hard, but had not read much more of it. She asked if I would like to come upstairs, look through old photos. I declined, saying thanks, and I have to go. Return to my car and drove home. <laughs> One more? Okay. This is about my, yeah, I mentioned that I was adopted. I, I met my um, birth father. I talked to my, uh, my birth mother on the phone a couple of times, and we haven't talked since. But my birth brother, my birth brother, um, my, my brother, half-brother, um, face, uh, sent me a Facebook messenger. Uh, he sent me a friend request. I didn't know who he was. He sent me um, a messenger message, and I didn't have uh, an internet device. I just went to the library and looked up um, Facebook on the internet, so I never got the message for like a year. 
half a year to a year, when I bought a device, his message popped up and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I, I ignored his friend request for a year and he had sent me a message and I didn't know. So we, we had, we're in a little bit of contact now, so that's good. But this is my father um, and his name is Richard. And this is, uh, I, this is the one I met. The way he says chakras, the way he said my mother had other lovers when I was conceived, the way he said, read Samuel Manashe, he uses as few words as necessary. The way he drove to Cleveland to visit me by way of the Adirondacks, the way I refused to see him when he showed up at the psychiatric hospital, the way we weave our lives around our stories, around our fractured understanding, the way his emails leave a dent in me now that mine are no longer returned. So. <laughs> Thank you.